We learned a lot about stress since the 30s of the last century because we studied ill people. So what we actually know is how is stress working on people who are ill, who have already a disease. What we didn't study, and we started doing this during the last six years, how is a normal, healthy person's response on stress. So that's a huge difference, because when you are ill, something very critical happens. You're, you're not able to deal with stress. I made my way through research and I found it's not only fight and flight, which is, if you have it on the long hand, really a problem. I found tend and befriend as a natural response on stress. So just to get it clear, if you have fight and flight, if you have an impact from outside, you produce adrenaline, you produce cortisol. And if you do this for a long time, the result is you are exhausted, you don't sleep because you're so exhausted, you're too tired to sleep. Um, you, you feel pain, you feel less concentration, you feel aggressive. All that sort of symptoms might show up because basically you only use your emergency program. So fight and flight to me is an emergency program. And just to, to get a picture of this is, so if the, if the emergency is a lion, somebody with a weapon in front of you, then it's quite okay to decide fight or flight, because that's the way to, to survive, the best way to survival. And, but if it's in our time, it's not lion or weapon, it's too many people too many information, too, too much radiation, too many negative information, too, too much challenge with the feeling I'm not able to do that. It's I need a break, I, I need a reset and I, I, I at least don't know how to do this. There's no way to put myself back into my best version. And so the natural responses than oxytocin, meaning you are producing a hormone which is made for bonding. It's made for being in contact. It's made for, okay, you're not alone. And that's how every living creature in this world does it. They have stress and they come together as a group and they deal with it, no matter whether they are the bonobos, you know, the monkeys, it's the same with people. And so in our times we feel isolated. We have no way to, to deal with this on a regular basis. So they are isolated, they feel stress, and because they are isolated, they have more stress. And so if you get this idea completely, it's the normal answer on stress is I'm, I'm pro-social. That's the result. In the modern environment, that's, that's especially in city environment, <coughs> the tendency is to be fairly insulated. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're living in a couple relationship, you're kind of insulating yourself from the idea of a community. Mm -hmm. And um, the stress signals are still happening, but you're not getting the community feedback as well. Mm -hmm. as, as before. Is that correct? So it's correct to, to put it that way. So you have this the stress response and you have a community but you don't know how to use it. So this is the modern time situation. We don't know how to use it anymore because we are so individual. We, you know, this is me, this is my process, this is, it's not, this is us. We are a tribe. We are a pretty huge tribe of people. And we are all different and we are the same, so it's always both. There's something very critical if you look at it like we are no tribe anymore. If you translate this directly into biochemical response, it means I'm in danger. 
because this is evolution. We are made for being together for better survival. And being alone is directly connected with I'm in danger. And if I'm in danger, if my brain always is wired up as you are in danger, it does its best to help me through. So, and this is emergency all the time. And this is not the basic plan. The plan is to live and not being in danger all the time. Many of my clients, no matter what they bring to me, like I'm feeling depressed or I, I have a chronic disease, it's basically they have to understand you have influence. It's not happening. It's not passive. It's you do it. It's about you. It's not about me. So this is the first step. You have to understand you have not only the responsibility for yourself, you have the ability for yourself. It's I'm able to. So it's about enabling them. So that's, you know, I'm very much into words, so enabling, so it's the point. So, and being able means I'm made for it. I can do that. And, and then the next step is to, to, to teach a deeper understanding what's the deeper meaning of stress. And in my setting, I always provide the idea I'm not good although I have stress. I'm good because I have stress. So we actually need stress to be a better version of us. But it hasn't to be this kind of stress that makes me really like this. It's more or less this, it's a little discomfort. And the point is you can train this. And this point of discomfort is something which is totally individual. And we find, we have to find the right gradient for, for them. So it's about understanding. And the other part is about practicing. So I don't practice meditation for, for relaxed people. Or teach them meditation and say, okay, do meditation for relaxation. No. Meditation means you are doing a training. That's the basic meaning of meditation, meditare from Latin, training, exercising. So that's the direct translation. So what you exercise with med meditation is keeping your focus, keeping yourself centered, knowing where you are, being silent, which is active. Silent again is something active, it's not passive. And then there's this real relaxed situation in the morning. So this is one of my favorite exercises I start with. So when you wake up in the morning, there's a slight moment, a small moment where you feel nothing. It's just fine. This is your natural version. This is, I'm relaxed. And then we have plans. So I talked to a Maasai guy and a Maasai warrior and he said, you know, your trouble in, in Europe and the Western world is you have so many plans. <laughs> I asked him, so what do you mean you don't have any plans for the day? <laughs> no, of course not. I have tasks to do. I have a task. There are different things I have to do. I'm on duty. And I love that because then I serve my people. And this serves me. So this is the perfect co-regulation. I serve myself and I serve my people. So, and this idea, this, this way to look at things, this way to get an understanding about the world and what's, what's the connection, what's the, what's the quality, how it should be. And so it's about how do you interpret your the things you do and your experiences. So if you think, wow, this is a problem, okay, then the only thing you might experience is a problem and it's fighting again. So it's again fight and flight. And if you say, good, that was no nice experience and now I do something different. It's still a situation you won't like. But your brain produces a different pattern if you say, good, it's this. I'm recognizing 
which is not only being aware, it's first of all, I just see what's there and it has no meaning until I give a meaning, until I create a meaning. So, and this is the most critical part in my work because people don't accept this. They say, no, things have a meaning. And I, so I have to keep this space to say, no, you create the meaning. It's not the thing. It's not this. So in former times, a woman like me would have no chance. And I'm sure there have been many, many women like me. And they all survived and they found ways and they found possibilities to, to be what they are. And so in this time, it's different. It's a different challenge. And the, the deal is always the same. We have to decide what does it mean? Do I agree? Don't I agree? But no matter what happens, this is what it is. And I'm okay with it. So, of course, I, I, I use herbs to support people dealing with stress issues. So they need a lot of nutrition, they need a nutrition change. And I use um, electromagnetic fields to stabilize them. Because very often, if you're so far away from yourself, if you're so disconnected with your own being, it's, it's a very important situation to have a clear field you can adjust yourself in. And again, this is something on a physical level where we are made for, what we are made for. Like, uh, the human body is an antenna. And if this antenna gets the right information, then things are fine, no matter whether you have stress or not. So when we started with the first devices, uh, the plan was to copy the fields of nature and to enhance them a little, to make them more effective on people who are in trouble. So that was the first idea. And if you see a field, in a, Basically, it's a matter what you really think about the world. So to me, energy is before matter. So energy creates matter. So if you look into the Bible, in the beginning was the word. The word is frequency. So it's about fields, it's about frequencies, it's about information. So if I'm using the word information, it's about bringing something into a form information. So <clears throat> my experience is that if we get the wrong information, we do s s very consequently something which is no good for us. But it's consequent. It's, we follow the information. And so if you, if you look at the epiphysis, if you check on the whole body, you see we are an antenna. And this antenna is made for being connected to the field around. And on the other hand, you're, you yourself create a field around you. And you might notice if you're meeting a, pe a person for the first time, you feel, no, oh, oh yes. So this is field information. This is not just intuition, it's field. And if you, if you check on the electromagnetic field in the body, the heart has 400 times stronger electromagnetic fields than the brain, which was very surprising for me. So I feel it's like having different kinds of radars we are using to check our environment. And on the other hand, the, the environment is the reason why this body is like it is. So our eyes only react on this frequency because they are made by this frequency on a very basic level. And so the the tricky thing is not is it's not one frequency this which is perfect for something it's always a spectrum so if you if you have to really go into it you understand it's overlapping so everything is overlapping with everything and this is how we adjust and so if you 
go into the brain and see what the brain does. It's, it's again, it's, it's an antenna and it's a computer at the same time and, and there must be a reason for that. So to me, quantum mechanics, physics is much more convincing than any biochemical explanation. Biochemical explanations are always good to know and I'm very much into them. Just to get that clear, I'm very much into them, but this is just a part of the bigger picture. It's like fight or flight. It's just a part of the bigger picture. The bigger picture is you can do it. We are able to survive. We do tend and befriend and sometimes we do fight or flight. So it's about communication on a very, on, on very different levels. So it's about on a field level, it's about on a biochemical level, it's being in contact. I mentioned oxytocin, for example. So it's not only a hormone, it's a neurotransmitter as well, and it's a pheromone. So it's made for connect you with other people. So if you learn how to breathe properly, and if you do it in connection with the field information, you produce lots of nice pheromones. And that not only changes you, it changes your environment as well. So it's a lot about pleasure. It's a lot about, ah, okay, this is stressy now. I do this breathing and I have maybe a little something with me that helps me to keep my space on a, on a very um, field level, on an electromagnetic impulse. It's, I can change everything and I don't have to fight for it. It's just, I'm, I'm there, I'm being there. So to me, it's the perfect possibility to connect spiritual attitude, normal behavior with very modern technique to make a difference. If you look at evolution or if you look at nature, natural processes, it's always we are made for adaption, our body is able to adapt and it, it's, it's ready to adapt. So what helps us to adapt on situation we can change. So if you, if you have this feeling, I'm helpless, I can't do anything because they, they use this technology and even if I don't want it, they do it. It, it, it's like I'm giving up, I'm just leaving myself. So it's, it's again, it's disconnection. So if I say I'm living in this world, I'm in the 21st century, I love my computer, I love my smartphone, of course, it's perfect, it's helping a lot, but I have to know how to use it. And since we, we are all socialized in this version of uh, reward, we are trying to get more and more and more. And so this is the language of dopamine, for example. So dopamine is not only a reward system, it's the door for dictum at the same hand. So if we understand how to deal with those aspects of our life we can deal with, and it's very simple to use a small device, it's very simple to change your food, at least in small pieces. Maybe you don't have to do it all, it depends on what you want. If you want to have all, you have to do a lot. If you are satisfied with just a little more quality, you can get it with less effort. Um, and still there's genetic code, there's something you brought with you. It's about epigenetic and let, let me put it into, into a sentence like there are many changes through all the years human mankind is existing and the biological part which is the response for this kind of change is the epigenetic code and the structure in our body are the mitochondria, those who are producing ATP which is by the way modulating the stress hormones so it's you know we have a beautiful beautiful cycle of adaption of being able to adjust exactly on this level where we need it to be and the only thing we have to do is exercising changing our attitude in the way we we do an interpretation and uh, being taking care of our field and so 
I think we are living in a fantastic time because we can do more than we can could do 100 years ago. But we also have a lot more stressors, right? Or would you say now, we, we I wouldn't say we have more stress. I mean... Stressors. Um, yeah, okay, if you say that we have more stresses, no, I still don't agree. We have different stresses. So it's, you know, if I, I, I put myself into a situation where I'm living outside, I would love that. I'm living in a cave, okay, that's fine for me. I have to run if, if a bear is coming or a lion or something like that, okay. If, if it's a thunderstorm or something, well, I'm able to do that. In these times, I, I would put it like this, we have nothing to fight for because we have everything. And this is the trouble. And this is the stress. We don't know what, what we are made for. We forgot how we, we can use ourselves. So um, because we don't feel connected, because we feel weak, because there's nothing to fight for, because it's all there. We need a new evolutionary program. So, and this is the stress. There's so many new stuff we don't know how to deal with that we can get the impression there's something very critical with us. So, to say it a little provocative, it's we don't have enough challenge. We don't have enough of the real challenges. So we are too good and we are kind of bored. So in one of my speeches I used an example. So there are different kinds of laziness uh, which are connected to burnout, to feeling stressed. So the first form of laziness is I'm doing nothing. It's very honest. Everybody knows she's doing nothing. She's a lazy bone, no stress, no burnout, but a lot of boredom, which can cause a lot of bad feelings. So, but not real burnout, I would say born, uh, born out, <laughs> bored out. Yeah, okay, so the second way is to say, I'll do it tomorrow. We call it procrastination which means I don't do my job. I forget to take care for myself. I do it tomorrow. And so it's pretty intelligent doing like that because everybody sees, oh, this person is busy and there's such a huge amount of things to do. The schedule is full and there's no way to, to make a change. So this is very high in the stress level and this is very close related to burnout and to stress diseases. And then the third one, which I do experience in the 21st century, is I'm so busy. So I'm so busy. And if you see somebody's busy, you won't have even the idea of laziness. But being busy all the time is the most intelligent and the most dangerous version of laziness because you are not responsible for yourself you are always going out of this is my thing I have to do I'm responsible for me and I'm responsible for my relationships and for the people around me if I'm always busy I don't take care for my family I don't take care for my friends I don't take care for myself because I'm so busy Translated word by word, I should say, I'm not interested into you. I'm not interested in my family. I'm not interested in my family because I'm so busy. I'm so important and everything I do is so important. So it's just kind of ignoring what's really important. And it's this kind of, if I'm so busy, it's so intelligent because nobody dares to say, uh, listen, I want you on my side, I want to talk to you. So I, I experience kind of this if I'm on, on, on summits, because I'm always in the, in the masses and I'm, everybody wants me, everybody wants to talk to me and I'm ready to do that, I'm open to do that, I love to do that, although it's a challenge, of course. It's hard work, basically. But uh, I decided to do that and so I prepare myself doing that. And to me it's, it's kind of painful if people say, you are so busy all the time, I don't dare to ask you. And my common answer is, please do. 
ask me. I'm ready, I'm here for connection. And the beauty is, if people listen to me and they understand, yes, she wants me to ask her. And although I see she's busy, she's ready to be in connection, then it's so different, it's such a different energy. And it's very simple, it's just the signal I'm sending. It's about signaling. So if I'm signaling, I'm so busy, nobody will be in contact with me. Everybody will say, well, she's busy, she's clever, she's doing something, wow, wow, wow. But it's not, it's not this, yes, we are doing something really great here. We are the different people. We are those who try to make a difference. We are connected because we are on the th same track. We try to do natural healing. We try to use physical devices for, for helping people. So it's, it's not healing in this common medical sense. It's more or less on a deeper level. How can we enhance our field? How can we enhance our connections to be able to take the next step, which is, which is already there because we created a technique that makes us growing. I mean, it forces us to do. We, we can't ignore that it's there. We, we can't go back to the, to the caves. We can't go back to so Stone Age. And, and maybe it's not really interesting there. So to me it's, well, it's a little, it's a little extra way now, but if you, if you check the times after a war, all people work together. We have the we, because we got a lot of distractions, we got a lot of pain and we share this pain, we share the distractions and then we start to rebuild our world. So this is our common idea, this is, this is the, the thing we can say yes, That's, this is what we do. And in the moment when we have something of the old stuff back, we start to disconnect. And I wonder What project, what name, what word could it be that everybody is able to relate to and to say, yes, I'm a part of it. I'm a part of this world, I'm a part of this field, and I'm doing what I can do, because everybody has something to give. So, And this is not only spiritual, it's, it's something we, we really need to do for survival. And I'm always astonished that people don't notice it. It's so strange. They so we are still discussing about this world, and we don't notice this world doesn't need us. We need the world. Building a relationship which is stable, which is still there if, if times of trouble are there, cost time and attention. And if you're not ready to give this time and attention, it's kind of an escape. And it might be I'm so busy because I feel my life is not, not good enough. I'm not good enough connected. And the other part is really addiction. So if you work all the time, it's a reward system. I, I already spoke about it, that dopamine is the reward, the biochemical reward in your, in your body system uh, for you did well. But you did well means do more of it. So if you got a, if you got a goodie, you want more goodies. So it's like a dog. So it's very simple. It's a very, very old pattern we follow here. So being busy, we are speaking of workaholics, means I'm non-connected. I know I, I'm in contact with many people who do a lot of work and they are still connected, so it's possible. And I notice if I'm in trouble with something in my life, my first idea is to work. My second idea is to do sports. The third idea is hold on, look what's here, and then do sports, and then do my work, and then see what I can change. So I learned to do it different. So it's, it's basically a very modern version of fight and flight, which is flight in this case, if I do too much work. If I say I'm not able to do that. So 
That's why I say I don't have time, I create it. So let's create some, some space for us, let's create something. Yes, my ske schedule, I have a full schedule, of course I have a full schedule, because I like to have it, but in the schedule there are spaces for people, for friends, for, for loneliness as well. So this escaping and addicting system has the same biochemical um, language, by the way. It's the same like fear and anger, it's the same biochemical language, which is very close to uh, stress language in the body. When, when people have been experiencing stress for a long time, they begin to have fatigue and eventually they will have chronic symptoms and, and this in itself, the reaction to disease, is another stress factor, so it gets even, even worse. What do you recommend when you're in that tailspin, energetic tailspin. So if you have this energetic tailspin of I have, I've had so much stress and now I feel symptoms, I feel fatigue, I feel maybe even chronic disease. First of all is to understand you can change it. There are possibilities. It needs work, it needs time, it needs attention, and it needs discipline, but you can change that. It doesn't need to be like that. Uh, second is, you have to understand that you are moving in a certain pattern how to deal with stress. So the pattern is, I need to fight, I need to give everything I have. No, you have to find the most economic way to do it. And it's a game. It's, it's really, can I do this more effective? So it's not working all day long to make it better, it's just do one to four points a day and say this is enough and I did it and it's fine. So this is reward and it gives you the feeling it's not that much for, for, for the next day, it's just I wanted to do this, I managed to do this, this is a good feeling. So, and then I try to teach this you have to enjoy what you what you reached. So, and the other option is uh, to understand if you do every day something, it's better than doing once a week a lot. So it's about the small steps every day that change your situation. And most of the people who come into my office who are really in under stress, they say, well, I don't know how to change it. This means I don't know how to change my life, which is a huge step. That means I don't know how to change my environment. I'm living in this world. So and if you can change the things around you, you even can change yourself. You can change your attitude and the way you deal with it by using right food, by using additional um, nutrition, uh, by using herbs, by doing some exercise, by breathing in a certain way. And my experience is keep it stupid simple. The, the simpler it is, the better the results are. The lesson life taught me was, if you make it too big, it won't work. So the smaller the step, the easier the change. And it's it's not, you know, we are, we are trained to say, well, I want to reach this target and I have 30 days to do that. Well, that's okay if you want to do the reward system and then you are under stress and then you don't have the result you want. So it's a pattern again. It's, we are used to, to behave like that. And so uh, I, I like to explain it like you have to do small steps every day, you have to breathe, you have to change your food, you have to move, you have to drink enough, you have to uh, connect with people, you have to connect with yourself, you have to meditate. So it's a pretty full program, the days are pretty full packed. And if you do four days, four things a day, it's fine, it's not, doesn't have to be more. So you have to use priorities which means you have to take responsibility to decide this is important and this is not important. And this is a challenge in our time. In our time we 
we have no priorities. Everything is important. So I get so, you know, I receive so many emails with high importance with this red little something on it. And I always, this is not more important than the rest. I mean, hmm. Okay, so, and it's about rhythm. If you have your own rhythm, you will be totally stress resilient. If you're out of rhythm, no stress resilience at all. And so let me, I, I love to, to do this anti-fragile um, training like, okay, this was uncomfortable. How did it feel? How's your interpretation? And now check on your body. What's the difference? And what can you do to say, I enjoy it? I enjoy it because I made it. It's not reward, it's, ah, I made it. And I was good with it. You know, like, like children, they always want to do the best they can. And, and they do it. And we teach them, no, you're too small. You're not able to do it. I expect you to do it wrong. And they follow our expectation. So it's a very, very deep pattern which we have to change. And we have to change it by small steps every day. Otherwise the gradient is much too high and we will lose the game. That's clear. One tiny little postscript uh, that I would like to touch on is, is this idea that we're, we're, we're kind of still behind in our thinking in terms of being defined genetically. That we are mm -hmm. born into this world as defined creatures with certain faculties that come from our parents and heritage and in, in terms of the new science of uh, epigenetics is to actually even emotionally realize that by changing the signals that we are subjected to from people, environment, etc. we are empowering ourselves to change ourselves to mm -hmm. what we want to be. How do you get this across to people and, 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 and your clients? How do you use it in your own practice? Um, so, since we are born into a world with genetic determinism and evolutionary patterns, we are all learned, they are there, you can't change them, that's, it's kind of a, you know, somebody says, that's the way it is and you have no choice and you have no influence. And I personally refuse. I personally refuse totally. And that's what I offer to my clients. I say, well, I understand that you are trained like this. We are all educated the same way. And I have this tiny little voice in me who says, what if this is wrong? And since I'm using a question, it's easier for them to follow. They say, what do you mean by that? What if it's wrong? It's not wrong. And then I start a discussion with, okay, what's right and what's wrong? It might be different. And then again, it's if I say you have every influence, which is true, on the same hand, you create guilt if you're getting ill. So what did I do wrong? No matter how much influence we have, there's still something which is like it is, which is a normal process. But we all have the chance or the choice to, to create something, to decide what kind of person we want to be. So I'm not only my parents, of course not. I'm not only my teachers, I'm not all the people I met, I'm just myself. And sometimes I think people are interesting and I try to be like they are because it's so, it feels good. So it's kind of a copy and this is a very, very childish learning program which is made by nature. So in the beginning we simply observe and then we take it all in and we copy because we, we know these are the adults. They know how to, to, to grow and how to survive. So I have to observe and do everything they, like they do it. So we, we never will have so many neuron connections until we are five 
ever. You know, for the, for the first five years, we take everything like it is and think this is the best way because this is the way how we learn to survive. And then we start having an own idea and then we start figuring out what does my body need? What do I need? Do I like this? How does it feel if I do this? So I think so 50 years ago or maybe yeah, 50, 50, 60 years ago, uh, the education was, okay, don't do that. And then there was the small shift of um, anti authority education and this is okay you watch like your child is running against a wall and then you go and say how does it feel running into a wall so it's very extreme one says don't don't do that don't go to that one and the other say okay run into the wall and then tell me how it feels like and between is the truth of adaption um, experiencing, do your personal research and uh, this entdecken Discover. ah, and discovering the world like it is. So it's, it's about discovering, it's, it's about being in a journey. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Entschuldigung. Mm -hmm. um, Dürfen wir aber noch zwei Minuten, wir machen gerade fertig. Ja, okay, danke. One, one, one more. It's getting, it's getting worse now. Yeah. <laughs> more people coming. This is the last one. Realizing the connectedness of, of life, uh, which is clearly a medicine for stress. Part of that is a kind of a, not only intuitive, but also a, a scientific understanding of the nature of fields and field interaction. But none of that has been taught to us when, when we grow up, not in schools, not by our science, not by our medicine. How do you cultivate? You were born and raised with, uh, with the faculty that you were connected to this aspect, but how do you cultivate this type of intuition in, in your clients, or do you do that? So, well, in, in our society we, we don't learn to deal with fields, we don't learn to really deal with intuition, we, we learn that's how it is, that's what you have to do, these are the rules, follow the track. So that's, that's the basic we have and we all have it. So what I try to do is to find the level where the client is because as I already mentioned it's about gradients. So if you have somebody who has, was never never in contact with physics, my first question is do you think that the world is chemical? And if they say yes, and then I say, okay, if the world is chemical, how do you explain electricity? And then they say, well, electricity is different, which is blah, blah, blah. So they, they go back to their school knowledge. And then I offer, for example, every living thing has a special radiation and you can feel it. Did you ever experience that? And most of the people will say no. And then I try to give them an experience. I touch, I give the device and say, feel, feel there's something. Can you say that? And what I experience is, yes, there is something and I don't have a word for it. And then it's about cultivating words. What, what's the best word for it? And so it's kind of a replacement system. So if they don't feel anything, if they don't, if they are not ready getting the science information, I can say, well, I, I could explain it scientifically. Are you ready for this? And if they say yes, I do that. If they say no, I just need the experience, then I'm working with words. So it's, as I already said, it's more or less a replacement, replacement system. I replace but with an and. This was a challenge and 
I'm interested into challenge and I'm and I'm open what it might bring so it's an end and an end and an end you're not nice to me and I still like you it's not you're not nice but I like you it's a totally different information so I have stress I have lots of work to do and I'm good with it I agree so it's an end again and the other word I introduce to these kind of clients who are not open to anything put uh, the word good on every experience you make no matter whether it's good or bad so good so let's say we, we do an example in the morning I'm in the hurry I was too late I missed the alarm so I try to start my car and this car doesn't start so now I'm troubled my my boss will be angry I it's not the first time that this happens <laughs> so I might lose my job my my colleagues might be angry on me because they have to do work for me I don't know what to do I don't have the money to repair the car so whatever might come up in this situation so which is normal stress reaction I could say good my car doesn't start okay now I do some calls and then I check how to be there then I check with the bank whether I can get a credit to repair my car so it's because I say good, although it's not, I have new ideas, I find solutions and I do a totally different biochemical recipe. I just do a do totally different mix. So if I say, oh, well, I might lose my job and oh, I did it not the first time and I don't have the money and my colleagues and my boss. so then it's always stress, danger, run, run, run. If I'm running, I'm not thinking. Thinking and visionary is walking. It's not running. So this is a huge difference. Mm. So I, I can tell a story of my own life. I, I was desperately waiting for my new paper for my office because I changed some things and I wanted to make it work fine. And I made everything perfect. I prepared everything. So it was just one little piece. The print has to be on time. <laughs> and guess what happens? Of course it wasn't. So then I made a phone call and I was angry. And then she said, okay, we do our best. And I thought, okay, good. They will do their best. That's all I can get now. One week later, it was already much over time, I opened the package I finally got and it was the wrong paper. It was the paper of a different company. And then I said, good, it's the wrong paper. Now do I, I have to do a call. I have to write an email and I have to find a way how I can do this without having the best paper. So I found dif different solutions for that. And I was totally relaxed. So I called this lady and said, okay, now I got paper, but it's wrong. What can I do? And then she said, yes, you have to make a picture. You have to send a picture to prove that it's the wrong paper. So what kind of picture do I have to send to you? Well, it has to be an open thing so that you can see 10% of the deliver is wrong. So I did it and I, I said, okay, I hope this is good enough for you. And then I waited because I couldn't do anything else. I couldn't do magic and have the, the right paper. And so now something beautiful happened. I got an email from the, the, the company in Switzerland. They got my paper and they asked me whether I would have theirs. And so meanwhile, the print company decided we do all the print again. And we want the people who got the wrong paper to burn the paper they got. So it was totally crazy. Nobody had the idea we could exchange it. Now it's too expensive. So this is, it's too expensive to send paper between Switzerland and Germany is a normal stress answer. It's never more expensive than doing the print again. So you won't pay 
some hundred euros for it. So, and this is the difference. If you say, good, this happens now, what can I do now? It's still not perfect, but you have a totally different mix of uh, biochemical response and that's why you have less stress and find solutions. And that's what we are made for. Things are there, say hello and do something di different. So what, just to get this lesson clear, begin everything that happens. The first sentence you have to any experience with the word good. Good even if it's not. It's no affirmation like my life is beautiful, it's good, this is now and I can do. And the other option is replace a but with an and and then see what happens. It's not but, it's not although, it's and I do, and I or and you, whatever. So it's, and with this small little changes. It's a huge reconnection in your neural system, so your brain is totally different wired because you use different words. And I said it in the beginning, words are frequency. So this is a beautiful circle of frequency, field and our evolutionary plan we have to change now to adapt on this modern time. <music>